I'm gonna talk to you guys about keep looking. Keep looking. You say, Dr. Short, what are you talking about? Let me tell you something, man. Your eyes are powerful. In fact, say it with me. My eyes are powerful. And I'm not just talking about your physical eyes. I'm talking about your spiritual eyes. Everybody who's been born again, who accept Jesus into their life as Lord and Savior, have 2020 spiritual vision. Say it with me. I have 2020 spiritual vision. Keep looking. In fact, it reminds me of Hebrews 12 2. It says, keep looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of your faith or the founder and perfecter of your faith. Did you know Jesus is the founder of your faith? If it wasn't for Jesus, you wouldn't even have faith. He is the founder of your faith, Amy. He is the finisher of your faith. Jesus is the founder and finisher of your faith. And not only that, he's the perfecter of your faith. See, you are not even called to perfect your faith. That's Jesus' job. And some of you guys are trying to get into Jesus' business. It's Jesus' job to perfect your faith. And you say, Dr. Show, how do we do that? We keep looking. We keep looking unto Jesus. We keep looking and finding Jesus in the Old Testament. Jesus says, man, this whole book is about me. From the beginning, from the cover of the Holy Bible to that leather cover on the Holy Bible, all the way through the maps, you can find Jesus there. Jesus is the author and finisher of our faith. Beloved, that is good news, Sherva. That's good news, mom. But Jesus is the author and finisher of our faith. And you say, well, Dr. Shulva, well, how do we understand it? How do we know that? Go and look at Hebrews 12 too. And it breaks it down. See, Jesus, he endured the cross for us. Number one, he defined our shame. And also, He's seated at the right hand of the Father. So you say, Dr. Short, let me break that down. He endured the cross. What does that mean? That means that Jesus took all our punishment. He took our sins on the cross. Therefore, we don't have to take it. Therefore, we can keep looking at Jesus and everything he did, his glory, his wonder, his, 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 his might, his steel and velvet. And that's how we overcome we continue to look at jesus it reminds me of there's a scripture in the old testaments when i remember the children of israel were in the wilderness man and they had to make a a bronze serpent and put it on the pole so for some of you bible scholars you go and google that they made a bronze serpent and put it on a pole and it said everybody that stared at this bronze serpent Guess what? They were healed. If they were bit by a snake, they did not swell up and they didn't die. As long as they stared at that bronze serpent on the pole. And you know what that bronze serpent on the pole represent? It actually represents medicine and dentistry. That's one thing. If you look up a bronze serpent or a serpent on a pole, one of the symbols for medicine and dentistry is that. It's a snake wrapped around a pole because that represents healing. And see, Jesus actually became our sin so jesus actually became what that serpent was on the pole so every time we look at jesus man guess what healing is released in us every time we look at healing beloved you have a sickness if you have heart ache i don't care if your back ache your arm ache your neck ache your 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 your, your feet swell up we have to continue to look at jesus and when we look at Jesus, the Holy Spirit is going to give us specific instructions. Come on now. Do you know the Holy Spirit is living inside of us? He's our wisdom. He's our counsel. He's our God. And every time we look up unto Jesus, the Holy Spirit is speaking to us. Hey, do this. Hey, don't do that. Hey, eat this. Hey, don't eat that. Hey, take this walk. Don't take this walk. Go exercise. Go and see a doctor. <laughs> See, some of you guys are so spiritual minded, man. You know, earthly good. You thinking that, oh, only thing I'm going to do is just pray and fast and that's going to be it. I'm not against praying and fasting, but God put doctors here on this earth to be in the same occupation that he's in, healing. Sometimes you've got to take your butt to see the doctor. Sometimes, yes, you have to take that antibody. Yes, sometimes you have to take that steroid. Yes, sometimes you have to even get the surgery. 
But in the midst of that, thank God that he sent Jesus for your healing because he is the one that gave the doctors their skill. He is the one that gave the scientists the ability to be able to discover the medicine. It's still about Jesus. See, Jesus endured the cross. All our sins, beloved, past, present, and future were placed on Jesus. And at the time our sins was placed on Jesus, his righteousness was transferred to you and me. Therefore, we are the righteous of God in Christ Jesus. And that righteousness has rights and privileges. I'm gonna repeat that. That righteousness has rights and privileges. And we have to recite that anytime we're going through a situation, we have to understand, we have to repeat, I am the righteous of God in Christ Jesus. On your best day, on your worst day, if you're stuck in the mud, you're stuck in addiction to alcohol, drugs, pornography, prescription pain pills, I don't care what it is. You have to repeat and understand your righteousness. Man, Jesus paid a precious price for us to be free. In fact, the Bible says whom the Son sets free is what? It's free indeed. Jesus endured the cross, not for himself, beloved, but for us, for all who believed. Get that in your spiritual conscience right now, beloved. Holy Spirit, I pray that you brand that into their spiritual consciousness like cowboys brand their cow to let them know that they belong to them. And once that cow is branded, guess what? It can't be unbranded. It know it belongs to the owner of that ranch. Holy Spirit, let them brand the righteousness consciousness, sear it into their minds, sear it into their spirit in Jesus' name. So he endured the cross and guess what? He despised our shame. So beloved, when we get stuck in the rut, we get stuck in a cycle of sin action. See, Jesus came and paid for the guilt, the penalty, and condemnation of sin, but he did not come to pay for the action of it. But guess what? He, he, was, despi he was despised on the cross and he was shamed on the cross, so we don't have to be. And see, the thing is, is that when we really understand what Jesus did on that cross, man, we have a better appreciation of what we have. See, when Jesus was on the cross, man, guess what? He was whipped. He was bleeding. Man, he was, he, he couldn't breathe. And not only that, he didn't have on any clothes. Do you know they stripped him butt naked? And see, the movies can't show that because that would be rated X. He was stripped butt naked. He was shamed. The King of Kings, the Lord of Lords, man, was stripped butt naked and was shamed so that we don't have to be so that we can stand tall in our righteousness. Now I'm talking about the righteousness of faith. I'm not talking about the righteousness of what you do or don't do. I'm talking about a righteousness conscience. You say, well, Dr. Shore, break down that righteousness conscience to me. Okay, I will. Say for instance, somebody owed you $10,000. No, say for instance, you borrowed $10,000 from one of your coworkers. And you said, I'm gonna pay you on October the 1st. Well, October the 1st was yesterday. And you walk into work and, and they say, hey, do you have my money? You're gonna be like, no, I don't have it. Guess what? You're not gonna wanna sit down at lunch with that person during the lunchroom. No, because you're gonna have a sin consciousness. You're gonna be like, man, I know I owe this person that money, man. I don't feel comfortable sitting down at lunch with them. That's what I'm talking about. It's a consciousness of sin. But when Jesus came, guess what? He paid that sin debt for us. He paid that coworker a million dollars instead of 10,000. He was an overpayment, beloved, of our sins and wrongdoings. Therefore, we can come boldly to the throne of grace and therefore we can come boldly to our coworker and not only just sit down with them, ask them, how you doing today? How your family doing? How your cheering doing? You can have that conversation with them. Why? It's because your debt was an overpayment. And that's the same thing with God. That's why we can come boldly to the throne of grace and ask God for whatever we need. Sin consciousness versus righteous consciousness. You are the righteous of God in Christ. Say it with me. I am the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. All my sins 
was laid on Jesus at the cross. It's the power of right believing. And not only that, guess what? Hebrews 12, 2 says that Jesus is now, because of what he did for us, he's seated right now at the right hand of the Father. Jesus is seated right now. So therefore, no matter what we face, Amy, no matter what we face, Jeremy, no matter what we face, Tiffany, no matter what we face, Angela, no matter what we face, Remy, Gretchen, Yvette, that we can be seated. You know what that word seated means? That word seated means a finished work, Daniela. When we're seated in Christ Jesus, that means that we are expecting him to come through for us at his time. Because everything we do, Daniela, okay, we want to do it to reflect God's goodness and God's glory. And a lot of times we're doing too much. We run around trying to please this person. We run around trying to please that person. We, as, as my grandmother said, you run around with your chicken with your head, like a chicken with your head cut off. And only thing God wants us to do is labor into the rest. He wants us to be seated in Christ Jesus at the right hand of the Father. At the right hand of the Father. In fact, Jesus is not only seated at the right hand of the Father. Do you know Jesus is making intercession for you and I? Do you know Jesus is praying over you and I? Holy Spirit. See, for, for you guys just tuning in, I'm talking about looking unto Jesus. I'm talking about keep looking. Do you know when you keep looking unto Jesus? Do you know you release supernatural miracles in your life? How many of you guys need a supernatural miracle in your life? I know I do. And you do too. We all need that. And when we, how we release that is keep looking unto Jesus. You say, Dr. Short, give me a verse. Give me, give me a Bible story about that. I'm glad you asked. Do you remember there was a storm when the disciples was on the boat? Okay. And it was in a midnight hour. It's in a dark time. And Jesus told them to go ahead and go into the other side. I'll catch up with you. Right. And the Bible says at night, in the middle of the morning, when it's the darkest, I'm talking about wind and waves were, were growing, getting on the boat and the boat was sinking. It was going up and down and they were frightened because they thought they were going to drown. All of a sudden they looked and they said, wait a minute, I see a ghost. And Paul said, wait a minute. You know what? That's not, I mean, Peter, he said, that was not a ghost. He said, that looks like our rabbi. That looks like Jesus, that like Yeshua, our salvation, our deliverer. He said, Jesus, if that's you, Bid me to walk out on the water. And Jesus said, come. And you know what? Only thing, only thing Peter had to do, he just had to keep looking at Jesus, not looking at his circumstances, not looking at what's going on around him. And that's a word for you today. If you don't get anything else, keep looking unto Jesus because as he looked on, on Jesus, he was able to do a miracle. Peter was able to walk on water. He was able to defy the laws of sinking and tap into the law of buoyancy. He was able to walk on water just like Jesus did. Oh, Holy Spirit, let me, just like Jesus was able to walk on water, I pray and I know that you'll be able to walk on your situation right now. I don't care if it's debt. I don't care if it's death. I don't care if it's in your finances, in your marriage, dealing with your children. I don't care if you're hurting right now. I don't care if you have to make a, a, a business decision. I don't, I, don't, I don't care if you're trying to make a decision, if you're going to stay married or get divorced. Keep looking unto Jesus. And you will walk on water just like Peter did. He said, Dr. Shore, I'm, I, I know I've been there many, many times in my life when the waves and I was stressed out about this and that and the this and that and paying this and that and health this and that. And I said, you know what? I'm going to keep looking unto Jesus. And every time I've done that, he's always made a way for me. And I know he's made a way for you as well. But guess what? When you start getting worried, when you start looking around at what's going on, guess what? Those waves, that water in the ocean gets into your boat. It gets into your spirit. And once it do that, guess what happens? You start sinking and you start drowning in debt and despair. 
And that's what happened with Peter. When he started looking at everything that was going around him, when he took his eyes off Jesus, the Bible says he started sinking. And the good news is, even if you are sinking, as long as you say, Lord, save me, guess what? He's going to come and he's going to reach down and he's going to grab you and pull you up and out. So even if you are stressed out, even if you are worried, even if you are looking around at what's going on, you just say, Lord, save me. And he will do just that. So, beloved, no matter what you're going through, I just want to encourage you on this day is to keep looking. Keep looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher, the founder, the perfecter of your faith. In Jesus' name, I hope you got something out of this. If you got something out of this, great. Click like, click share it. Don't don't keep this good news to yourself. Don't keep this gospel to yourself. Like it, share it, go to my YouTube page, check out this video. You got to read. See, the thing is with the Bible and with the word of God, you have to keep watching it over and over again. The Bible says faith come by what? Come by hearing. You got to keep hearing this over and over and over and over and over and over again. And that's what produces repentance. Repentance doesn't mean that you're sorry and you have to beg to God and crying with, with snot and tears. Come, no, it's a change of mind. Your mind changes. You start understanding who you are in Christ Jesus. You start understanding that you are the righteous of God in Christ Jesus. Once you get that into your spirit, as I said before, once that's seared into your spirit, just like that person that owns the ranch sears those cows and brand them. Man, you know who you belong to and can't no devil in hell can change your mind because it's seared. Your consciousness is seared with righteousness in Jesus name. Love y'all. Grace. Life.